Good evening. Tonight's topic is modern archons. Our guest tonight is Monsignor Scott Rosbach of the Apostolic Jedi Church. Welcome, Monsignor. How are you? Doing well. Thank you very much, Bishop. Well, uh, why don't we just kind of jump right into this uh, topic here? Um, you know, for our viewers who aren't really uh, aware of kind of uh, the classical idea of uh, Gnostic uh, of archons in, in classic Gnostical uh, cosmology, you want to give them a little bit of a brief explanation, Scott? Sure. So um, April DeConnick has a wonderful paper in the book uh, Practicing Gnosis yeah. about is called The Road for the Soul is Through the Planets. And this paper gives an idea of the way the archons were viewed in classical times. They were basically barriers to the soul exiting the material world. So when the soul is uh, the We lost brother. Okay. Um, actually, it sounds, looks like Father S Scott uh, has a technical problem, so we're going to get that, try and get that corrected. But the idea uh, with the archons is that these are barriers to the soul actually exiting the material world. And there are different uh, ideas about how the archons came into be, but one of them is that their, their mother is Sophia, and they're kind of these lower entities oftentimes associated with the planets mm -hmm. is uh monsignor scott are you back yet yeah, i'm back now okay why don't you go on and and uh continue on there okay so the soul comes into the material realm through the uh the gate of cancer which okay. uh is associated with the moon and then drops down through the zodiac to the gate of capricorn where it actually is put into a material body Okay. And so the idea that these Gnostics had was that they should be reversing that pattern. Mm -hmm. And they had a series of prayers that took them through all of these different gates and had them face off with each archon in order to get to the true realm of the Aeons. Okay. Interesting. So yeah. th we know about this from an argument between uh, Celsus and Origen that is uh, recorded in Origen's book, which is called Against Celsus. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, it, but uh, Origen tends to be very, uh, want, he, he wants to be very accurate. And so he mm -hmm. quotes things very accurately. Okay. Um, and I would point out that uh, Origen himself was excommunicated from the church four times after he was dead. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, my, my church history professor in seminary told me that they did that because he was too smart. So they didn't want to try it when he was alive. Um, I guess so the thing too, that there was, there was not a clear cut division between who was Christian and who was uh, Gnostic because the, Christ, the, the Celsus guy was actually arguing against the Christian yep. and yep. saying all this stuff is Christian belief. So and, and, and Origen objected to this, and, and Celsus had his, I'm sorry, he had his Ophite, the Ophite diagram, which I'm sure Monsignor will go into, but the funny thing is, is that Origen said, you know, I have this, di this, or, this, this uh, diagram, and I can't even find any gullible women or stupid yokels uh, that use this. <laughs> but exactly. he was trying to be accurate, so he kept a lot of records for us, like Brother Irenaeus. Exactly, and I think that this is a pretty widespread idea that uh, Celsus was talking about and Origen was talking about because Irenaeus mentions it as well and he's all the way across yeah. the empire. Mm -hmm. So no. this idea of the Archons and having to pass by them to uh, reach the, the paradise or the, uh, the final destination of the soul is kind of widespread. Now, was there differences though in different, um, I guess, Gnostic um, thought, different Gnostic schools on uh, on the various cosmologies of the Archons? Or would you say that this kind of principle of returning back from Capricorn now back through, through Cancer, if we're reversing this, uh, was this more of a universal principle, Scott? Well, I think there are certain factors that are universal, like uh, the number seven seems to come up an awful lot. Mm -hmm. And I think that a planetary attribution to each of the Archons is also pretty common among the cosmologies. 
the names are different, the ways that you overcome them are different, the ways that you deal with them are different from area to area and from time to time. Mm -hmm. But there are some definite consistencies between the ideas. And it's also interesting that even in modern esoteric schools, the number seven just constantly comes up. Uh, there's seven rays, you see, in theosophy, as well as the seven octaves in Gurdjieff's teachings as well. And of course, we, we see that in Christianity, too, with the seven virtues and the seven vices. And yeah. It's a very important number, seven days of the week. Yep. So absolutely. So you've got this. You've got this number, and it's something that that it seems like a bunch of different schools grabbed onto. So we're talking about now the classic idea with the astrological meanings uh, and the idea of overcoming various ways of overcoming. But now we're talking about you want to talk about modern archons. Um, how might we understand the archons today? Well, one of the things I want to talk about is still on the classical side. Sure. It's sure. simply that um, I, I want to read one of the prayers that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is, this is the prayer against the Archon Horaeus, who is associated with the moon. Okay. You who mount the wall without fear, the Archon who protects the first gate, Horaeus, let me pass since you see the symbol that destroys your power with the imprint of the tree of life. Your power has been seized by the image according to the likeness of innocence. May grace be with me. Yes, Father, may it be with me. So, I mean, from this we see that the Archons are not necessarily uh, temporal. They deal with things that are eternal in the human condition. So, mm -hmm. fear and innocence and mm -hmm. grace and these images that we use in order to overcome these abstractions that we feel. Mm -hmm. So, I think we're talking about modern archons we can kind of still translate some of these classical ideas like fear is a very modern archon oh, um, yeah. uh, hatred pride any of the the sins i think we can definitely see that these are things that affect us even to this day mm -hmm. so on the one hand we've got this sort of eternal temporal kind of thing at the same time i think the archons today have tools that are far in advance of what was available in classical time and just in the idea of distractions and addictions that sure. if we're not careful can end up instead of being for instance the internet is a good one instead uh -huh. of it being a tool it can become a ruler and as soon as it becomes a ruler as soon as you lose control over your ability to interact with it mm -hmm. it's on it's preventing you from doing whatever it is you want to do it rules you and so I think that's kind of the idea we should be thinking of when we're talking about modern art. Just out of curiosity, Monsignor, I'm putting you on the spot here, but have you ever thought about, or have you ever attempted to make draw correspondences between the classical archons and, say, some of the modern tools that are now available? You know, I haven't exactly, although there is an archon who's associated with Mercury, and they talk about a lot of his communication ideas, and that would be the Archon Aeolius. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is dog-faced, incidentally, just so we know that. But I think that he definitely plays into a lot of what we end up dealing with now, because communication, social media, all these sorts of things can become such obstacles to us in our spiritual quests. They absolutely can. And of course, you know, Mercury was a trickster. Exactly. Yes. Um, and anybody who's ever had to deal with a uh, so-called Mercury retrograde, um, you know, people will always talk about, oh, Mercury's gone retrograde, and, and there was this, you know, this, the communications go awry and that sort of thing. Um, so definitely when we're thinking, I think it's a really good correspondence, because definitely when we're thinking about this, what might be useful communications, tools of communication can absolutely be enslaving. When people aren't, for example, getting a full night's sleep because they're so addicted to their smartphones mm -hmm. that they feel exactly. a need to respond every time the phone goes off, but also the kind of danger that takes place in people's relationships where people, uh, you know, feel a need to, or actually will demand that another person respond to their communications instantly, whereas uh, you know, 40 years ago, when I was a little kid, 
if you, you know, you couldn't get a hold of somebody because they weren't home, we didn't even have answering machines that much back then, um, right. you, you waited a few days. And nowadays, we, we, get, we get all dramatic if somebody doesn't respond to a text within five seconds. Sure. I, I, yeah. I mean, just from a personal experience, I can tell you last night, for instance, uh, I'm in bed sleeping. It's 1.30 in the morning. Well, you know, I've got a friend out in California and uh, um, first I can hear a text come in. Then I hear a Facebook message come in. Then I hear a text come in. And at this point, it's like, you know, I'm turning off my phone. I'm not going to respond to this. It's 1.30 in the morning. You know, and I get up this morning and it's all of these various texts. Hey, I really want to talk. Can we talk? It's one thirty in the morning, you know. Um, but again, it's it's one of these things with um, with yes, I can see how technology and modern technology can definitely be that as as an archive and something that can rule us instead of it being a tool. What about drugs? I again think any. Anything that we can interact with can certainly become an archon if we're not careful. So drugs, um, alcohol. I mean, we obviously use alcohol in our rituals all the time because we mm -hmm. do the Eucharist. So we have wine, and alcohol is an integral part of that. And there's many other um, rituals that are used in various spiritualities that alter our consciousness. But it's when we start being unaware of what we're doing with these substances that I think they become an issue. Because you can use these in a very deliberate way in order to uh, alter your consciousness, even alcohol, even incense, to, to get yourself into a spiritual frame of mind. But if you're just doing it mm -hmm. without any regard for why you're doing it, it all of a sudden becomes something that rules you. If you feel weird if you don't have a drink during the day, then yeah. you have yeah. an issue and you have an archon that you are going to need to overcome. And how would you, rec in a modern sense, I mean, I'm, I'm, prayers are certainly appropriate, but would you have any suggestions for how do we interact with modern archons? Well, I'm, I think there's several ways that we can deal with it. Um, the first way, of course, is to be aware that there mm -hmm. is an obstacle, an archon that is trying to control your life. And I mm -hmm. think we see it over and over in modern culture. I mean, we... we there was a discussion somewhere about Gnostic movies and the Gnostic movies always have these various archons that are controlling us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to a certain degree, there are certain archons you can't overcome. Um, for instance, if you look at the idea of government being an archon under the yeah. sphere of Jupiter, yeah. then there's nothing you can do with that. So you either need to ally with it or avoid it or make it work for you somehow. So I, I think those are pretty much your ways of, of dealing with things is either finding a way to, to ally with it and make it a benefit to you, find mm -hmm. a way to open it so that it no longer bothers you, find a way to avoid it so that it doesn't find you, or make it work for you. I, That's fascinating. And I, 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 I don't mean to, again, put you on the spot, uh, Monsignor, but this is the sort of thing that I would love to see a book written on because... I think that there's some real areas for, for modern Gnostic practice in this, and I, I would love to see some, some more correspondence and associations made. Now, when we're talking about avoiding something, how on a, are you, are you speaking a spirit, you know, purely on a physical level, or are you speaking about, is there a, do you think that there are spiritual ways of avoiding the archon? In other words, spiritual practices uh, that can help you just change your own mind so that you are separate or separate yourself from the archons or do you think that some of these archons you are going to just basically have to deal with on the physical level like government you know basically pay your taxes but stay off the stay off the internet don't get on any databases that sort of thing i i think that like any good gnostic i think that there's always three levels of mm -hmm. what's going on there's the material the psychic and the pneumatic mm -hmm. so on the one hand, physically, you have to be able to address your issue. Whatever the Archon is, you have to be able to address it physically. Um, in the case, my favorite case is alcoholism. So mm -hmm. if alcohol is your Archon, you have to avoid it mm -hmm. if you overcome it. That's all there is to it. I mean, alcoholism is recognized as a disease, and it's something that you simply have to avoid. You can't control it. You can't do anything with it. You just have to stop. Mm -hmm. 
on a psychic level, you have to get that idea through your mind. You have to make your your mental world have that sort of idea in your head. And so you have to have things like AA to support you and you have to know what you're going to do when you reach a weak point. Because that Archon is going to wait for that weak point and it's going to hit you. That's what they do. They hit you when you're weak. And then on the pneumatic level, you have to have the prayers. You have to have the the idea of turning your spirit towards this so that it can help you when you have those weak moments. Mm-hmm. And the safety prayer is a great example of that as far as alcoholism goes. Um, that's, again, turning the physical, the, the psychic, and the pneumatic all towards the same goal. And what we need to remember is this is the long game. You yeah. are not going... Yeah. You are not going to enter the realm of the aeons tomorrow. This is a mm-hmm. long. You have to overcome the archons sometimes daily for the rest of your life, and it can be tiring and weary. And you have to make sure that you have your support in place, whatever that support may be, whatever works for you in your case. All right. Well, thank you so much, Monsignor. And I know we're going to continue this conversation in Talk Gnosis After Dark podcast. Uh, soon after we, we finished taping this show. But thank you again for some really, really uh, wonderful insight. Well, thank you. It was wonderful to be able to partake in the discussion. Yeah, thank you so much. And as uh, Bishop Lanning stated, I am sure we'll continue this interesting discussion. Um, I would like to thank, as I'm sure Father Tony and Bishop Laney would, our our, uh, patrons and those who subscribe to our channel. If you've enjoyed the show and if you found it helpful, you know, please uh, make a donation. Uh, You can pledge a small amount per video or podcast. You can do that by going to HTTP, um, semicolon, backslash, backslash, Patreon dot com slash Gnostic and that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Gnostic and this directly supports the development of this program as well as others within the Talk uh, Gnosis Network and we're getting very close to our next milestone which at $30 is going to be Bishop Laney's weekly homilies so if you haven't pledged now's the time to do it you want to tell us a little bit about those homilies uh, Bishop well, I'll, I'll tell you something. I, I did get an A in homiletics when I was in seminary. And awesome. I do, I, do, I do really enjoy preaching. It's one of those things that I really like doing. And so I'm hoping to start a series of, of weekly homilies uh, so that people who maybe are not part of a local community but do appreciate listening to short homilies, I'm not one for preaching on and on. Um, I'm looking forward to preparing those weekly, hopefully offering some you know inspiration and support and comfort to people who care to tune in fantastic and uh, as far as news is concerned I want to remind everybody again about the Apostolic Joanite Church's conclave uh, which is happening at the end of May and it's going to be in Chicago again you do not have to be a Joanite to attend and nor do you even have to attend for the whole uh, program if you want to attend for a day or just for some sessions uh, please visit the Joanites website at www.joanite.org and there's a there's a whole section on conclave and you can write to them and and ask about what you need to do if you just want to attend part of the event uh, i'm going to be there i'm hoping that that bishop ken will be there father tony will be there uh, monsignor are you going to be there i will be there oh wonderful wonderful yes yeah, so it's it's going to be a great time and uh, we hope to see our, our our viewers there so if you're interested do go visit the website and and look into it also, um, if you remember a few weeks back, we had the discussion about the Jesus wife, the gospel of Jesus wife controversy. Well, there's been some uh, new developments in that. I would suggest that if you're interested in that, you can visit uh, Dr. April DeConnick's website, uh, April DeConnick, A P R I L D. E C O N I C K dot com, and on her blog, The Forbidden Gospels, there's a recent post regarding this issue. So if you're interested in following up on that, um, go right ahead and uh, check it out. Fantastic. Again, we appreciate all of the feedback from our viewers. Um, you can find us on social media, you can find us on Facebook. Um, you can find us obviously here on YouTube. Make sure you leave your comments for us. 
or drop us a line at talknosis at gnosticnyc.com. Um, you can give us suggestions for shows, talk about various show notes. Um, and of course, you know, your, your comments on our Facebook page as well as here, um, we, we deeply appreciate those. Uh, coming up on our, on a future talk notes, we are going to be joined by Brother Jason of the Apostolic John I Church, and we're going to be talking about work in campus ministry. That should be a very interesting show as well. Having grown up with, uh, you know, on a state university campus where we had Campus Crusade for Christ and various offensive preachers, I'm looking forward to hearing from somebody who does Gnostic uh, campus ministry. Yep, should so be I'm very good. To that. Yep. Um, and as always, folks, this has been a production of the Gnostic NYC Network. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with your friends, click the like button, and subscribe to our channel. Opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily represent the views of Gnostic NYC or any other organization. No animals were harmed during the production of this show. And for more talk gnosis, tune in every Wednesday for new episodes. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, and good night, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.